Hi, I'm Nate Bauer with AM Leonard, and today we're visiting one of our local partners, Nate Torf's Nursery and Landscaping here in Mason, Ohio. With me today is Nate Torf's Chief Horticulturist, Liz Jacobs. Liz, thanks for letting us visit with you. Yeah. I'd like to begin our discussion today, today with how Nate Torf's has grown through the years to become a leading uh, landscape and nursery in the greater Cincinnati area. Nate Torp's is a fourth generation company. It started back the early part of the last century. William A. Nate Torp, uh, who is the namesake for our nursery, is, uh, came back from an internship in Europe and started his own landscape company. And about four years into that, found he couldn't find the plant material he wanted. So he started a nursery. Started out his eight acres. Um, over the next several generations, his son Merton, and uh, then Merton's son Kent, who's still head of the company here, um, and then Kent's son, sons Kyle and Craig, who are president and vice president of operations here. Uh, we've moved location any number of times uh, and grown considerably to include, uh, besides uh, this nursery, retail operation, um, landscape design, installation maintenance. Uh, we've been on this location about 20 years. Uh, I came to the company about 10 years ago as a second career. Um, my first career was in chemistry and research uh, and just wanted to get outside. So, okay. so that probably helps some of this in this, in this aspect Absolutely. Uh, okay. And that's primarily how I, how I hooked up with the company, doing some internships. They were just expanding their pot pot tree mm -hmm. uh, facility. They had a lot of questions they needed to answer. And uh, so I came in with my testing background and uh, helped them to yeah. handle that. All right. I'd also like to discuss um, in more detail how uh, our AML root pouches and Floricam have helped with the company and how uh, they've helped you. Right. I, well, they, uh, the AM Leonard products were both introduced to me over the last, oh, I think I learned about Floricam a couple of years ago. Okay. And uh, the root pouches were um, presented to me about a year ago. And as horticulturalist, my job is to constantly look for better ways to do things, to produce a better product because uh, that's the most important thing mm -hmm. for us. We want to produce the best products. We want to give um, we want to give our customers the best sure. product and service. Okay. What is Natorp's mission and, and their focus? Our mission's pretty simple. Uh, we just want to provide the very best uh, products, plants, services, and to really set ourselves apart. Uh, we're going to do that by understanding our customer better mm -hmm. than anybody else, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to find their needs and we're going to meet. Who are your main customers? Uh, as a wholesale nursery, our uh, our customers are the typical you know, landscapers, uh, re wholesalers. Uh, we have this location and we have another uh, wholesale location mm -hmm. nearby. Um, we sell to a lot of garden centers, a lot of the perennials you see here uh, will be going out to garden centers in uh, early spring. That's one of the things we're known for is our variety. We grow 500 varieties of perennials and 250 varieties of shrubs. Um, so uh, we're a big supplier to this area. But our, we also um, service municipalities, uh, a lot of non-for-profits. So we can't forget our, our annuals customers. Uh, we do a lot of contract growing, okay. uh, annuals, perennials, trees. All right. So how big is the nursery, and what type of growing do you do? Well, on this location, uh, we're about 130 acres. A uh, little less than half of that is field production, trees, okay. some shrubs. Uh, we have about 20 acres um, of growing small containers on gravel. Mm -hmm. uh, you see this greenhouse here, and we have another one for annual production. That's about five to six acres of controlled uh, greenhouse space. Uh, we do uh, pot and pot 
tree production. There's 30,000 sockets. Um, and then also on spray state, we do uh, about two acres of shrubs. So that's that's on this location. Uh, our, we're just getting ramping back up into our liner production. We've got 10 new uh, liner houses uh, going up right now. And we have a um, we have an evergreen farm, another 135 acres, about yeah. 12 miles from here. How have you streamlined and, and made your business more efficient? Well, I think efficiency is always uh, an important concern to a business, but you know, the current economic environment is an absolute necessity. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm always coming from. Um, the industry that I did, uh, lean manufacturing was always an important part of how we did business. And um, so a couple of years ago, we brought in a consultant coach, got together all the process and, and people leaders here and made a team and spent about six months looking at all of our operations and trying to find those areas of waste and just kind of transforming the culture. And so, you know, lean, although we didn't go through the, the typical processes that a lot of nurseries do um, when they implement lean, uh, we have this kind of ongoing culture. We, we collect data, uh, we find those areas where we can make improvements and just incrementally. Always working smart. Yeah, for more right. What challenges do you foresee in the future? Well, um, other than the the typical uh, kind of things that, that small businesses face, you know, there's the new health care, there's the um, the availability of credit, there's government regulations, uh, there's just the need to set yourself apart in what is a very well established. Um, industry you know how how do you become new how do you become essential right you know when people can go get those services anyway so one thing is you know that we uh, changed our retail model from uh, the the garden centers to a retail outlet which is what this area becomes uh, in spring and fall uh, that has been our new uh, outreach in terms of retail and where we see us uh, growing. In terms of uh, in the wholesale side, it's just always being out there uh, and learning what customers are looking for and changing your product mix and making yourself be the location for uh, not just uh, the everyday stuff, but the exceptional stuff, the things that can't find anywhere else. In the pot pot tree operations, I uh, really ramped up the number of native trees we grow because I saw that as being a uh, an area for growth, and it has happened. We, we have all kinds of municipalities and uh, and other groups coming in looking for native trees. Okay. So it's, it's just being out there and, and finding the next right. thing. Right. How long have you known AM Leonard? and uh, how well have we partnered with you? Well, uh, I think Natorp's relationship with Am Leonard goes back even further than, than me. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, we've always appreciated uh, both the, the breadth of products that you offer and uh, the convenience of, of having nearby and the service that we get. Um, I only really started doing purchasing about five years ago and have always appreciated the, uh, that the account reps were always there for me to answer the questions, uh, to make things happen. Uh, my current rep, Jackie, Jackie, has done a great job. I think she appreciates the fact that uh, we're always really busy and you know, she she's always calling me up and, and letting me know when there are deadlines approaching, um, things that I had expressed an interest in and didn't follow up on, and uh, you know, she really helps me to be best at my job. Good. So, good. Uh, 
Liz, you were one of the first in the area to use Root Pouch. What were some of the features that, that appealed to you, and um, how has it worked for you? Well, uh, the reason I was interested in the Root Pouch, I, I do a lot of uh, research on, you know, the health of tree roots. Uh, growing in, in solid-sided pots is uh, it's a no-brainer. That's the way we've produced plants forever. Right. It's, it's easy. We know how to use that system. But it, it sometimes can produce root defects, especially in, in woody plants. Um, and there's been a lot of press on that. And I get pushback from customers that have, have wanted trees grown in, um, in some kind of root pruning product something that's going to produce a healthier root system. I've never been happy with the fabric pouches that I've seen um, other places, limitations on what you could grow, how, how you could grow in them. So when A.M. Leonard introduced me to uh, the root pouch product, um, I immediately knew that that was something that, you know, finally we could, we could probably use in our hot and hot operation. I was impressed by um, how sturdy the fabric seemed to be, and especially those handles, uh, because when you're growing in a pot and pot, um, trying to get a fabric pouch out, you, you almost have to have knuckles of steel to lift a big, heavy tree. So having those handles on there was like a yeah. you know, ding ding. And uh, so I was immediately ready to, to try it at that point. How have you used uh, the root pouch here? Well, we tried it on a limited basis, and we tried it in a, uh, both in the pot and pot and um, on spray stakes in our uh, Japanese maple uh, growing area. Um, we took one crop and did side-by-side -side comparison just to see how they, they did. Um, and then I also took some of the, the fussier native trees and, and tried those on the root pouch just to see if, you know, the better aeration would, would help them aggress. In your side-to-side uh, -side comparison, what mm -hmm. did you find between root pouch and, you know, the standard process? Right. We didn't necessarily see a difference in the top growth of the two. Mm -hmm. um, what I did really, uh, what did impress me is when we pulled these pouches out, and they fit actually tightly down into the sockets. So you don't necessarily get that air pruning when you use them down in a uh, down in a socket pot. But we had just uh, and, and service berry was the crop that we tested. They're not a, exactly aggressive rooters. And when we pulled this pouch out, it was just covered with fibrous roots that were growing through the fabric. What that told me was uh, that this really was a healthy way to grow a root system and also that that fabric was not going to be a barrier to the plant if uh, you decided to plant it out, you know, without removing the fabric. And that's the next thing that we want to try. We're going to take some of that crop and plant it out and see uh, how biodegradable it is and, yes. and provide all this uh, data to our customers who might want to use the pouch that way. So how have your customers responded to the pouch? Well, like I said, we did very few crops this first spring. It was our first trial. They're very excited at the prospect. Uh, one of our largest customers is a uh, community tree plant group out of Indianapolis. They've been asking a long time for uh, this product, and so they're anxious for us to, to produce a lot of the native trees that they like to buy uh, in the root pouch. So when do you expect to be able to bring that to your customers? Well, uh, of course we have the service berry, we have sourwood, and we have American beech in, in the pouches now. Uh, those will be ready for next year. And then with uh, our spring production season, we'll be doing a lot more of the native trees in the, the 10 or 15 gallon root pouch size. Those would be ready uh, to ship next fall. Have you seen uh, the advantages of, of root pouch in, in storing and handling? Well, uh, we ordered just a small sample this last spring, uh, so we don't really have data there, but I, it always occurred to me that 
probably there, that was going to be a huge benefit. Um, you know, the, the last shipment of um, 10 and 15 gallon pots, uh, an entire truckload was was needed to, to bring in maybe 3,000 pots. If you can, if three small bales uh, of these root pouches would accommodate the same um, production capacity, that would be huge. Yeah. yeah. So a little better for the environment too, not having all the, the plastic? Yeah, hey, that, that was the other pushback that we get from some of our community planting groups is, you know, we've got all this plastic and, and we've tried to make them feel better by um, taking the pots back and reusing them and being responsible in that way, but you're still talking about shipping stuff back and forth. Liz, let's change gears a little bit. Um, what do you consider most important in choosing the fertilizer? Well, uh, as a horticulturalist here, uh, from the time I, I arrived, um, finding the best way to grow plants uh, has been my main focus. And um, especially in the potted trees, uh, we have done fertilizer trials almost from the day that I arrived here. Uh, finding the right way uh, to grow a plant, uh, you know, not pushing uh, lush growth, but the pushing strong growth and you know meeting your objectives and still uh, meeting your timing objectives on the crop and still producing a, a really strong healthy plant has been important. So uh, you know we've gone through at least three or four fertilizer trials. Uh, Florican is the third uh, material that we've used in the potted trees. And uh, you know, what I'm looking for is something that, that gets going in the spring and gives me strong growth you know, through the July season and then, and then just really maintains a, a, a superior looking plant in August and September as you go into those fall sales but is, uh, is ramping down so that we're, we don't have any uh, any lush growth, we don't have any plants that aren't ready to go into winter. So really looking for that you know, right release profile. So, so of all the trials you did, you found fluorocan provided? It's, you know, yeah, I, like I said, we've gone through a couple of different fertilizers. Um, we did some trials with fluorocan last year, and uh, besides actually seeing some improved growth over what we were using, um, just all the plants looked great late into the season. Some of the, the problems that we saw with, you know, edge burn on the leaves uh, that I always assumed, uh, even though the tests weren't conclusive, uh, that we had problems with potassium not lasting late into the season. None of those things were there. And it, we got so many compliments this year on how good our trees look. So with fluorocan, which uh, formulas are you using? Well, uh, currently we're only using it as a top dress in the trees, uh, and it is a 19410. It's fully coated. Uh, one of the big reasons uh, that I went with fluorocan is that here I could get a fully coated product, um, in a well balanced, great miners package, um, at the same price that I was getting a blend before. So here you've got a, a product, uniform granules. You don't have to worry about the people, you know, uh, sampling the fertilizer properly when they put it down. So uh, it was it was easier for the crews to use. Uh, how would you how would you rate for a camp one to ten? I would probably put it in the eight to nine range. You know, like the Olympics, you don't want to give your ten out up front, uh, but it meets all the goals for, um, you know, what I was looking for in a fertilizer. How did you end up using the 19410, or, or what, what led you to that right. formula? Uh, well, Am Leonard uh, arranged the initial meeting with Chad Keel with Flora Can, and, um, you know, being a chemistry nerd, Chad and I had a lot to talk about, and, you know, I. I talked about my concerns where I had seen through testing in the past. Um, you know, our products fell short 
and that was the formula. We always used to use higher potassium, and he said, well, you know, if you had it fully coated, you wouldn't have to use that, that higher level of uh, potassium because it would be there for you late in the season. So that was his uh, suggested formula, and uh, what I really appreciated was the fact that M. Leonard uh, was going to be able to warehouse this stuff for us so we didn't have to jump through all the special hoops of, you know, ordering deadlines and stockpiling this fertilizer. It's there, you know, and if I miscalculate or, or we, we grow uh, more in the season than we initially planned on, uh, it's there in the warehouse. So you say you do uh, mostly top dress here? Right. With the trees, um, because of the volume of media we go through in a very short period of time, uh, we don't incorporate. We buy the media in. So we just top dress. Uh, it works well for us. Um, I would like to see incorporation trialed in, in some of our small container production, and we haven't done that yet. Um, I think it would be a great product uh, to try. Uh, in the past, we've had some problems in, in cold, overcast winters of, you know, um, of the release not ramping up fast enough. And uh, you've got that little teeny window to hit in April and May, and you want all your plants big and beautiful and ready to go. So um, I think we can make that happen. We don't, uh, as far as top dressing, we don't use an applicator. Uh, we have scoops, um, and that works great, like I said, with a nice homogeneous product. Uh, you don't have to worry about settling, uh, and it's, it's been easy for the guys to apply. Good. Well, Liz, thanks for your time. Thanks for letting us come out and visit, and uh, here's to a long partnership with Andy Winter and Haytorps. Uh, Absolutely. I've enjoyed it. Um, I, I really appreciate, uh, you know, I'm a busy person. I appreciate when somebody brings something uh, new to my attention. And you know, Root Pouch and Floricat have both been uh, winners for us. Good. Great. Thanks. AM Leonard. Experience what thousands of other horticultural professionals already know. Great tools, great service, great value.